Hello everyone, welcome back to Moonshadow Fantasy. I am your host, Maka. Um, quick disclaimer, side note, go ahead and take a screenshot of this and make a macro for it, forward slash P, and then uh, write down your red and blue timers, just in case you get to this part. However, you will skip most of this, and I will show you a little bit of a cheese. Our item level is 580. It's very important that everyone's item level is at 580 in order to skip Light Rampart. All right, that being said, let's jump in. Well met everyone, Maka here. The very first thing you want to do here is separate your party into two teams with a healer on each. We do only have one tank, but it's very important for these two teams because you're going to need those two teams for the pushback, the ad phase, and Ockmort. Okay. That being said, put your uh, markers in the A, B, C, D, North, East, South, and West. With 1, 2, 3, 4 at your 8 or cardinal positions on the smaller middle circle there in the middle, with the tip of the square hitting the tip of the um, ice diamond shaped thing. The diamond. Anyway, that being said, and the pre-breaks are done, we are item level 580. That is very important. Don't try doing this at 570. And at 600, 590 later on, you'll be able to skip a lot more of these mechanics as well. So let's jump into the very first of the mechanics. So the very first mechanic she's going to do after a raid-wide burst, of course, is going to be Mirror Mirror and either Driving Frost or Biting Frost. So make a mental note of where the red mirror spawn and which move she does first. So make a mental note that the red mirror spawned on our left-hand side. If she does Driving Force, we're going to move in front of her. But because we're getting Biting Frost first, we're going to move back near the red mirror and away from the green. Once the green pops, we're going to move away from the red, because the red always happens last. And we're going to stay inside the little um, safe zone pizza slice there. Mental note that because she did Biting Frost first, she's going to do Driving Frost after the pushback. Now here comes the first big mechanic that you do have to do. She's going to do a lot of things at once, so we do have a slow-mo for this. The first thing, make a mental note of where the first smaller ice AoE spawned. Everyone with a, an AoE under them is going to place their AoEs on the 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to move and face our directions where the first original ice markers formed to do a pushback. And then we're going to run back towards the center to deal with our driving force. Now here it is again in slow-mo. She does the big ice. She puts an ice debuff on two players. Healers Asuna that off. Four AoEs are going to go on the 1, 2, 3, 4. Make a mental note of your teams and where the ice spawned originally. So the first ice spawned on our east and west positions. So we spread out into our two teams. Well, in the middle there, we get into our two teams for the pushback. We wait for that um, burst to go off, the flare. And then the DPSs that didn't have the AoE under them are going to get an AoE under them now. So just immediately just start moving outwards pushing those AoEs off to the side, and then we're going to meet back in the middle to deal with Driving Frost or Biting Frost. Now we got Driving Frost, so we're going to move in front the boss, because she hits behind her, and then by now she's going to do a double slap, which is another tank buster, and then by now um, she should be good and good to go for skipping Light Rampart. She's going to do one more mechanic, which is a turn away. So watch the little um, marker where she says the light is in her piece or whatever. There's a turn away from the boss mechanic. Scythe kick is a donut AoE and axe kick is an out. She'll do it randomly. So if it's either scythe, move in, axe, move out. Again, separate into your two teams because now you've reached add phase and you've skipped light rampart and you don't have to worry about it. I don't know, that's a lot. And the add phase is very simple. Well, the only thing you need to do is make sure that there's a healer on each side. Everyone gets a healer. Never mind me, I'm just trying to get rid of the uh, party finder list. And then one add is going to have a tether tied to them. So each player, there's going to be four players on each map, each player takes the tether and takes one hit from that tethered add. All the other adds, you don't have to worry about the mechanics for them, they die almost instantly. It's just the tether needs to be needs to go to 
one individual person. Other than that, add face, nothing to worry about. You'll breeze right through it. Um, as far as the pushback goes, it's important to note that where that where the white ice circles spawned first it could be left or right, it could be north and south. But that's why we did the two teams, so that we could get pushed back into those two sections with ease and everyone knows exactly where they're going. Put a marker on the healers, one and two, um, and then just go to those positions. You know, you leave the AoEs at the one, two, three, four marker, and then move back into the center, deal with your pushback, wait for the hit to go off, come back in, avoid the AoEs from the DPSs that get the chasing AoE, and that's it. It's just markers, pushback, come back in. It's a lot easier than any of the other guys make it out to be. Um, after the ad phase, you're going to get a cutscene. We skip that. And then here's the very last thing you need to do. So at the very start of this phase, what we're going to do is separate into our two teams. It's very important to note that whoever has second aggro on the list, it's a little tiny number next to your icon of your job type, whoever has second, you're going to be on the opposite team as the tank. That's very important or else people will die. We knew that the uh, samurai or the reaper was going to be second aggro, so we had them on team one while everyone else was on team two. Um, that being said, then the tank's going to move out the wave to deal with a, like one little tank buster hit. And then the boss, Shiva, is going to have a glowing wing on either side of her. So what we're going to do is we're going to move from one side of the map to the other, avoiding her glowing wing, while also avoiding the, the green mirrors on the side. And just like in phase one, she uh, the green mirrors go off first, followed by the red. So we're just moving from side to side, bringing the burn, and avoiding the hits from the mirrors. After that, she will spawn a little tiny dragon head on the outskirts. So remember the screenshot I had you take in the beginning? Make note of the color debuff that you have and what number it is. If you're the lowest number of a dragon head or a puddle, you're going to go and claim your dragon head if you have the red buff, touch it, come back to the group while avoiding the, the wings, and then if you have the lowest number blue, you're going to go and claim the puddle. Now I had the lowest number blue, so watch me cheese this and just forget about it and not worry about it and just kill the boss. Usually every person uh, has to go and claim a dragon head or a puddle, but because we're unsyncing this and kind of cheesing it, no one else besides maybe one person needs to deal with dragon head and puddle. But again, you can cheese this and just let the one or two person people die and just keep the burn going. Um, especially if your item level, once we're all 600, 590, you will not have to deal with dragon head or puddles at all. That being said, that's the fight. I hope I explained everything that needs to be explained and this helps you um, with unsyncing with your FCs and party finders. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below and I wish you the best of RNG luck. Stick together, get it done. It's only a six minute fight and if you stick together and split off into your two teams, you will all have your amounts in no time. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Maka is out.